Over the last two years, we've been to loads of TV product launches and reviewed a lot of TVs. And while the progress in this sector is really exciting, it can also be pretty confusing, especially if you've not bought a new TV for a few years. But whether you're trying to work out which TV is best for a bright space, which offers the best viewing angles, or what QD OLED actually means, then don't worry, we're going to help you out with all of that and more in this video. So let's get into it. Hey guys, Emily here, one of the tech guides at SHS. And before I dive into the different panel types, it is worth noting that a lot of the picture quality is actually determined by the video processing, which is all taken care of before the signal even reaches the panel. So an OLED from LG and an OLED from Sony can have very different images, even though they are both the same type of TV. When we really simplify things down, there are actually only two types of displays out there, and those are LED and OLED. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that as we have a lot of options within those two displays. Mini LED, Micro LED, Full Array LED, QLED, QD OLED, MLA OLED, the list goes on. But generally, LED TVs tend to be more affordable and can offer higher brightness levels, while OLEDs tend to offer a better image quality with more vivid colors, better contrast, and pure blacks, but they can struggle to hit those higher brightness levels and come with a higher price tag. Plus, there is the burn-in fear factor with OLED, but more on that later. So let's kick off with the more affordable option out there. LED TVs use light emitting diodes, LEDs, for backlighting and a liquid crystal display, LCD panel, to create images. The LEDs generate the light behind the screen and the LCD panel acts as a shutter to control how much of that light then passes through to create the images. Now there are a few ways LED TVs can be backlit, edge lit and full array backlit. Edge lit TVs feature, as the name suggests, LEDs around the edges of the screen, and this can be done in a few ways. LEDs along the bottom, along the top and bottom, along the sides, or on all four edges. The main pro for this type of TV is that they are more affordable to produce in a wide range of sizes, but they aren't known for offering the best colors, motion, or viewing angles. Plus, the TVs tend to have a low contrast ratio and struggle to offer pure blacks, as light can spread into areas that should be dark, which can then give blacks more of a grayish feel. You might also see a halo of light around a bright object on a dark background, which is often referred to as blooming, and that's where the TV struggle to be as precise. Now you can also get direct lit models, which work very similarly to full arrays with LEDs across the whole panel, but these models don't use local dimming and therefore won't offer the same level of performance. To step it up, you'll want a full array LED display, which has LEDs across the back of the whole screen, which can be controlled more precisely to ensure the darker parts stay dark and the lighter parts stay light. These LEDs are found in zones, which can then be controlled more precisely with something called local dimming, which enables each zone to be individually dimmed to enhance the contrast and the picture quality. Now, the more local dimming zones a TV has, the better the contrast and the image will be. Full array TVs can get brighter than edge lit models and are much better at handling local dimming for better contrast, deeper blacks, and less of that blooming effect. These screens also offer better viewing angles than standard LED TVs, though there are still better options out there if that is your priority. This technology can also cause a problem called black crush, where it can become hard to see the details in the darker areas of a dark image. In general, I would recommend an LED TV for those on a tighter budget, but they are also a solid choice for a well-lit room or a room with good natural light thanks to their brighter performance, and they give a really reliable performance across different types of content. Mini LED is more advanced technology which takes things one step further from full array in terms of backlighting. With much smaller LEDs, we now have thousands arranged in a grid behind the LCD panel. The greater number of LEDs means we can get a brighter picture and have more control over contrast and brightness, meaning the results we get will be more precise. With this TV type, we can get more localized dimming zones to give brighter highlights and deeper blacks, and we also see improved color accuracy too over standard LED TVs. Plus, there's no risk of burn-in with this TV type, so it's often a good alternative for those concerned over the longevity of OLED. But despite the improvements in local dimming, like any TV that relies on zones and local dimming, these displays can still experience uniformity issues such as blooming, especially in darker scenes. Plus, due to the more complicated manufacturing process requiring more attention to detail and calibration to ensure optimal performance, there is a level of variability in the performance of this panel type. And that more complicated process also leads to a step up in price. Now, generally, mini LED TVs are suitable for watching content with a mix of bright and dark scenes and those wanting a more premium performance and an alternative to OLED.
It's worth touching on micro LED at this point, which represents the pinnacle of display innovation. In micro LED TVs, each pixel is an LED, allowing for millions of them to be individually controlled. Unlike traditional displays, micro LED pixels emit their own light directly without the need for a separate backlight, so they can be individually turned on or off and can display a completely different colour to the pixels next to it. This means we get a far more accurate colour control and what should be perfect contrast. These TVs also offer superior brightness levels, energy efficiency and longevity, but because of the more complex manufacturing process, micro LED TVs are currently limited to very large screen sizes and come with a pretty hefty price tag. But if this technology becomes more affordable, then this looks like the future for TVs, taking the best of OLED performance, but giving us a brighter and longer lasting alternative. QLED or quantum dot LED technology was first introduced by Samsung, who've been at the forefront of pushing and developing this panel type. These models introduce quantum dot technology, which replaces the color filters we would get in traditional LEDs. Rather than starting with a white light, QLED technology takes a blue light source and passes it through a layer of quantum dots to give a wider range of colors at different brightness levels. Essentially, the TV can maintain accurate and vibrant colors, whether it's a very dark scene or a very bright scene. QLED TVs also offer great HDR performance with enhanced contrast and good detail in both the darker and brighter areas of an image. Potential downsides include blooming issues as we're still dealing with backlighting, the blacks won't be as deep as on an OLED, you can experience some motion blur in fast paced scenes and the viewing angles aren't the best. However, these TVs are a great option if you've got a light, bright space as they can maintain picture quality even in brighter conditions and also do a good job with a wide range of content. So many QLED models also use mini LED backlight technology, which helps to reduce blooming and offers better contrast. Neo QLED is essentially Samsung's name for their mini LED QLEDs. So as expected, we now have thousands, if not tens of thousands of smaller mini LED backlights to give a brighter picture. And again, we'll therefore get a higher number of dimming zones for significantly better contrast. Neo QLEDs are a good option for those looking for a top tier picture quality, giving an immersive experience for movies, gaming and more. QNED or quantum nano emitting diode technology was introduced by LG as an advanced display technology. These TVs actually operate very similarly to QLED TVs with a backlight and a layer of quantum dots. However, they add an extra layer of nano cell technology which sits in front of the quantum dots. This layer is added to help absorb any light that has bled through from the backlight, further improving the contrast and the picture quality. Like QLEDs, some QNEDs can also be upgraded with mini LED backlighting. Choosing between QLED and QNED will come down to your personal preferences and what your main priorities are. QLED technology offers vibrant colours, good brightness levels and a solid set of features across a wide range of price points. QNED technology generally comes with a higher price tag but will give you better contrast levels and their precise colour reproduction makes them a great option if you watch a lot of nature programmes or artistic films. Onto OLED then. Now many people believe that ditching the backlight is the way forward for TVs. Micro LEDs are a good example of that. But right now the main technology driving this is OLED. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode and for these TVs we don't actually need a backlight as each individual pixel can emit its own light. This means, similarly to micro LED, every pixel can be fully turned on and off which is why OLEDs are renowned for their high contrast images and perfect black levels with no risk of blooming. These TVs also offer great viewing angles, so a good option if you've not got one sweet spot in your space. And they tend to be the best option for rooms that aren't as bright, or if you're creating a movie room, as most people believe they offer the most captivating picture for movie watching. Most OLEDs are WOLEDs or WRGB OLEDs. This is where they take a white light source and add colour filters to give us the colours that we see. Historically, OLEDs had a bad rep for causing burn-in issues, as early OLED TVs had problems with static images being burnt into the display. But it's not really a concern these days, as OLEDs have multiple burn-in prevention measures, including things like pixel refresher or pixel shift, which work to combat this problem. In general, OLEDs are often thinner than LED models and can offer a faster response time, often a higher refresh rate, and smooth motion, making them a solid option for gaming. But no TV tech is without its downsides. 
So, OLEDs can struggle to compete with LED TVs when it comes to brightness, so for the brightest spaces, they might not be your first choice. Though models released recently have worked to combat this, which I'll come on to shortly. OLED TVs do also tend to come with a higher price tag and in a more limited range of screen sizes. So as I mentioned, there are two other types of OLED TVs which are working to combat the lower brightness levels. The first is MLA, which is used in the LG G3 I've got here. MLA, or Micro Lens Array Technology, is one of the newest OLED technologies. It takes a WRGB OLED and adds an extra layer of microscopic lenses on top which work to maximise the efficiency of the OLED pixels. So how do they do this then? Well, in standard OLED TVs, there's a lot of brightness lost through internal reflections. And so the MLA layer takes that light and helps direct it outwards. Of course, this massively enhances brightness levels, but it also creates a more vivid image and further improves viewing angles without requiring additional power. It's just going to make the most of what's already there. Now, one potential downside we've seen with MLA models is that they can lose saturation in the brightest scenes and can require some calibration for more true-to-life colour accuracy. Now, this would obviously be our recommendation if you've got a bright light space, so you want a bright TV, but you also want all the OLED delivers with the vivid colours for gaming, excellent contrast and pure blacks. Okay, we've swapped the TVs over now to give you another example. So this is QD OLED technology, which is an alternative approach using the Sony A95L. It's a bit of a hybrid between what we love with OLED, but with the added brightness and colours gained through using quantum dots. Now, one of the challenges traditional OLED technology faces when it comes to maintaining brightness is due to the colour filters required to get a full colour spectrum. Now, QD OLEDs address this problem by taking away the colour filters and adding quantum dots in instead. Similarly to QLEDs, QD OLEDs start with a blue OLED pixel, which is left unchanged, and then they add red and green quantum dots. Now these quantum dots are known for their energy efficiency, which means we can achieve a truer and more precise representation of the colours needed without sacrificing much when it comes to brightness. Now from what we've seen so far, MLA is definitely winning on the brightness front, but QD OLED holds a title for best colour accuracy and vibrancy, and is therefore what we'd recommend for those wanting the truest reproduction of what the director intended at home. Now, our LG G3 versus Sony A95L is a great video to watch if you want to see these two technologies in action.